Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unboxing with Paul. Today, I bring you the Rebel 4G, T-Mobile's in-house brand and starter smartphone. Let's take a look at it. So right away, the first thing you're going to notice is that the box is a very high quality box. Let's put this phone aside for right now. In the box, we get a SIM card, as this is a Metro by T-Mobile phone. Along with that, we also get a starter guide to get you familiarize yourself with the phone and a SIM ejector tool. Um, we also get a USB cable and I got to say that this feels much nicer quality than any other um, USB-C cable I've seen included with any smartphone in this price range. We can see that this is a nice braided cable. Um, looks very high quality. Along with that, um, we also get a wall adapter that is rated for two amps. So not bad either. I mean, not good, but not bad either. Um, released in September 4th of 2020, this smartphone enters a very crowded and competitive market. Coming in at 158.5 grams, it's fairly light given its size. It has a 6.22, 15.20 by 7.20 IPS display, and it comes with Android 10.0. And again, I'm very, very thankful for the fact that we have a Type-C charger. Here we can see that it gives us the option to add a uh, face recognition, something that is not common in smartphones with this price range. Um, just like the Galaxy A01, uh, this one has a graphite back, which I'm a huge fan of as it's gonna help ward off fingerprints. On the left side, we get the SIM and SD card tray. At the very top, we got a headphone jack along with a pinhole microphone. And on the right side, we got the volume rockers along with a power button. Um, I gotta say that I'm a huge fan of this power button as, I mean, it's not textured, but at least it's bright pink following in T-Mobile's motif so that you can tell it apart very easily and you can't get it confused. And at the very bottom again, we have the gorgeous type C port um, that is for charging and data transfer along with two speaker grills. Uh, at the very back, we do get a fingerprint scanner, even though this does offer facial recognition as a means of security. You'll be surprised to find out that this phone has dual band Wi-Fi AC, Bluetooth 5.0, a fingerprint scanner as we covered, and a 3500 milliamp battery. Now that is larger than any other battery that I've seen in this smartphone, um, in smartphones of this range. In addition to that, we also get 32 gigabytes of storage, out of which um, we see that eight and a half are used up by the operating system out of the gate. And um, we do get also two gigabytes of RAM. Um, now here for the downside of the phone, we do get a quad core processor 
as opposed to an octa-core, um, even though that is clocked at 2.0 gigahertz. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how this phone handles uh, some light computing and some uh, light gaming. Um, I know I say this a lot about a lot of smartphones, but I am genuinely impressed with this one, at least um, in terms of how it looks and how it feels. You know, it's very big, graphite back, um, that power button that is easy to tell apart from the rest of them. And just the way it's laid out, I don't see any additional apps that don't really belong here um, besides the ones that are carefully selected as again, this is a Metro by T-Mobile phone. Very, very sleek. Almost reminds me of a Motorola. Now the camera is a 30 megapixel. Um, it is a single lens, nothing fancy back here. However, it is supposed to be able to record at 1080p, 30 frames per second. Um, surprisingly, we do get a wide array of features such as um, a pro feature that it will allow us to adjust the aperture and um, the opacity of the lens, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, um, so we see it has some built-in filters um, that can be applied in real time as well as a panoramic uh, feature function and a stop motion function. Um, the selfie camera is supposed to be a five megapixel rated uh, selfie camera. Um, it's nothing to write home about. It's not perfect by any means. However, it's good enough to be able to support facial recognition. So it can't be that bad. It is worth mentioning that this phone doesn't appear to have a built-in gallery app. Um, so for that, it looks like, what does it look like? It looks like we have to access um, the pictures through Google Photos. But anyway, this is what our pictures look like. And they're very zoomed in, I mean, they're not terrible they're 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 passable they're you know they're absolutely you know they're doable for what it is it's not going to you know it's not going to leave you unable to take a picture you know and this is what the selfie camera looks like again not the best picture very very poor one however they're they're not bad you know you can see all these poor details on my face they're not, they're not terrible. Could be worse. I've definitely, definitely seen worse. It's not, it's not bad at all. Um, if I have to be completely honest, it's the fact that I, I was convinced that this Google search bar down here was uh, movable. I thought that the whole screen um, was just like on a giant grid like it is on other phones. Um, it turns out, unfortunately, that only this top part is the available part that you have to, the available area that you have to, um, move stuff around if you go and you click down here you're going to see that there's no options that are given to you there's literally nothing you can do about this google search bar down here and granted you know that's never a big deal a lot of phones have that however you at least have the option to move it around as you please you know um but it seems to be uh it seems to be like that's down there for good just to show you guys how um how quick this fingerprint scanner is uh Watch this. Lock it. Lock it. Finger on it. Something that I'm a huge fan of in phones, in particular starter phones in this price range, is um, LED notifications. You know, that's something, there's a little bit extra that doesn't have to be in there. And if you can just see it right here. I've turned off my light so that you guys can very, very easily see it. It's very small. It's very tiny. However, it's nice. It's there to let you know that the phone is being charged. And whenever, I believe, whenever you don't have it plugged in, it just turns off. Whenever you do, it turns on. So now let's find out how this game does um, on some light gaming. Um, this is very, very interesting for me as this is the very first time that I've, um, that I've actually tested a quad core, um, device, um, and 
in, in, you know, in, in the longest time that I could possibly remember. Um, so I'm trying to do this in real time so that you guys can see uh, just how quickly, or how slowly this thing gets us into the game. Um, it looks like there is uh, an update that it's downloading. So we can, um, again, keep in mind, two gigabytes on the RAM, 32 gigabytes on the storage. I'll send it as a guest. Let's turn the volume up a bit. I must say, um, I I do definitely notice it. Um, I do notice a, a difference in speed. Um, it's definitely noticeable. Uh, also, when some of the confetti was falling in the title screen, I could see some of it was uh, lagging behind. Um, and now that we're in the lobby, um, go ahead and figure out how to move. We saw a little bit of lag right there. Run. Stop. Hmm. I mean, it's not terrible. At least it's not yet. Um, I believe brightness should be turned all the way up. There we go. Wow, that, that, was, that was quick. That didn't take long at all. Just gonna buy him up a bit to get the full experience. I can see that I guess some of the textures are turned down a little bit, um, but I see no noticeable lag really. Um, the auto pickup seems to be a little on the slow side, but again, that could just be my internet connection. Pick up those bullets. Let's try again. Okay. Okay. So I mean, it it it's doing well. Again, um, auto pickup is a little on the slow side, but um. Dude, I, 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 I can't complain, man. Um, textures do definitely seem toned down a little bit. Um, and it, it just might be that this game is optimized, you know, to run on a wide, wide variety of devices, you know. Um, but again, I'm, I'm impressed at how it's doing right now. I'm probably gonna keep saying that until uh, somebody kills me and I blame the phone. Oh, we actually got a decent weapon. Yeah, they are. Man, that was terrible. Again, that's just me being a sucky player, but that was terrible. I don't believe he had anything, poor fella. I feel a little guilty now.
don't know if you have no medkits. Oh, they're waiting for me. <laughs> Come on, where are you? Come on out. That was terrible as well. I took very, very long to shoot that guy. This is not cool. Hmm. I wonder if it's because of my connection that I keep having to double tap on the pickup for bullets, but. I take off really long. I wonder who they were shooting at. Oh, there we go. Shoot. Oh my god, I hate that. That was terrible. That was really, really bad. That was that was awful. And I am really bad at this game. <laughs> Where's the next one? Well. Well, there we have it, folks. Now let's see how long it takes to get us back into the lobby after how we uh, embarrassingly got ourselves killed. Um, but I I must say, um, that was really quick. I got us back into the lobby fairly quick. And um, now I do realize that um, this may not be the best app to test a phone out with um, as it is so, so very old. However, this is a quad core device. So it'll be nice to see how this one handles it. Um, just right off the bat, we can see that um, it rendered nicely. It didn't um, turn it up a bit. I'm not noticing any immediate lag. So, this game seems to be doing pretty well. Um, I'm not noticing any lag yet. Um, the textures are nice, they're crisp. Um, There's really, there's, there's no input delay or anything like that. Oh, shoot. Okay, we made it. Um, you know, if anything, my only complaints about it might be that this is not as good as the other beach buggy games, but that's why they made it, you know, in one and a two, in addition to this one. Oh, 
Man, but I have to say that this game, you know, holds up really, really well, especially for its age. Um, this is an eight-year-old game, and it still looks so beautiful to me. Um, this kind of reminds me of uh, Mario 64 games. Um, yeah, there we have it. That, that was not bad either. That was really good. Cool. Considering the quad floor, considering this being service on. That was great. I'm pleasantly surprised.